Hello everybody, I'm here to mark this week's exam with you, so let's get started. The first question is about some VI characteristic graphs. You've got three graphs, A, B and C, and it shows how the current varies with the potential difference for each different component. So let's have a look at them. This shouldn't be new to you. We've got one, two, three graphs and then one, two, three components. The first one I'm going to talk about is this resistor. The resistor is represented by that graph down there. Now I've added some extra information here which I think is going to be really helpful. So the resistor is an ohmic conductor. I've written that here. What ohmic conductor means, means a few things. One of the most important things is that V and I are directly proportional. So V, the potential difference, and I, the current, they're directly proportional. You can see that because this graph is a straight line through the origin. All right, so that's a bit of a giveaway. A resistor is an ohmic conductor, and a straight line through the origin is the graph that it's going to produce. The next one we'll look at is a filament lamp. This is a filament lamp here, so you can link those two together. Now, this is not an ohmic conductor. How can you tell? Have a little think about that. You can tell because it is not a straight line. It does go through the origin, but it's not a straight line. So that's what I've written here. V and I are not directly proportional. It's not an ohmic conductor. This last one's quite interesting. This is the diode and the thing about a diode is that it only allows current to flow one way but also it only allows current to flow after a certain potential difference. So I've written that down here. I've written it's non-ohmic. We know it's non-ohmic. It's not a straight line through the origin. And also it only allows current to flow past a threshold it's a special term they use there, threshold potential difference. We can see that on the graph. So, potential difference increases, 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 and no currents flow in until it gets to this particular point here. At this potential difference, then the current can start to flow. Um, so there you go, that's the first part of the first question. Next bit. So, there's a little typo in the exam. It shouldn't say 1C here. This is all part of 1B. You've got three different circuits and there's diodes in each circuit, two in each circuit and then a bulb in each circuit as well. Now the thing about diodes is that it only allows current to flow one way and you need to know which way is which with the diode. So if the arrows are pointing like this, then the current flows that way. It can't be the case that current can flow through a wall, so that wouldn't happen. Now, if we go from positive to negative on each circuit, we'll go round here, we can go through the arrow, we go through the bulb, we can go through this arrow, so actually the first one answers the question, right, which one of the circuits with the filament lamp be on, it would be this one because current can flow throughout the whole circuit. Quickly I'll just show you the other ones. If current is flowing down here it meets the wall so it wouldn't work. If current is flowing down here it can go through this one through the filament lamp but then it meets the wall here so that would be no good either. So the answer is J. I'll just write that in my green pen. Okay moving on we've got an energy question here. Uh, throwing a tennis ball in the air. You can all imagine doing that. We've got a little diagram there. At position C, the ball's just left the tennis player's hand and it's just left at a speed of 5 metres per second. So I've labelled that V. I've just used the term velocity because we're going to be using that a little bit later. But it's speed, velocity. Um, at this particular moment, it doesn't matter too much which one we use. Obviously speed and velocity are different because velocity includes a direction. The tennis ball has a mass of 58 grams but that's in standard units 0 0.058 kilograms. The first thing that they ask you is the equation which links kinetic energy, mass and speed. 
that is as follows kinetic energy EK was half times the mass and then V squared which is the speed squared next part it wants you to calculate the kinetic energy so you then substitute in all your values so EK equals half times 0 0.058 kilograms times 5 squared that's going to be 25 so we can simplify it down a little bit EK equals a half times 0 0.058 times 25 if you put that straight into your calculator you get 0 0.725 joules and we've been given the unit there as well so that makes it a little bit easier 0 0.725 quite a nice part to the question this at position A the tennis ball is at maximum height so I'll just show you that again this is position A so the tennis ball is in the air it's not going any higher it's as high as it could get it's not moving at this point as well right that's a key thing to note at the very top you can imagine doing this it's not moving so it doesn't have any kinetic energy at the top why? because it's not moving well it doesn't have any kinetic energy in its store that's the best way of saying it so I've written this here all of the energy is transferred from one store to another it's transferred from the kinetic energy store to the gravitational potential energy store so it wants to know what the gravitational potential energy of the tennis ball is it's going to be the same as the kinetic energy store because all of the kinetic energy is transferred into the gravitational potential energy store it's been converted so it's 0 0.725 joules like that a position B this position here so kind of like two thirds of the way up the tennis ball has 0 0.38 joules of gravitational potential energy I want to know the equation which links them it's MGH quite an easy one to remember mass, gravitational field strength and height it wants you to calculate the heights now so you do need to do a bit of a rearrangement write down your values first so the gravitational potential energy we were given here 0 0.38 the mass we were given before 0 0.058 kilograms gravitational field strength on earth you should know and it is given to you though 9.8 newtons per kilogram h the height that is what we're trying to calculate isn't it so write the equation down EP equals m times g times h start to substitute in 0 0.38 equals 0 0.058 times 9.8 times the height you can simplify this at this stage if you want to um, so it would be 0 0.38 equals, so I'm going to do that multiplied by that gives you 0 0.5684 times the height and then finally 0 0.38 divided by 0 0.5684 times the height equals and that will give you Zero point. Excuse me, I need to work this out. Okay, bear with me. I'm going to do this in the second part of the video.